invite the children to follow the procession to Children's Chapel as the congregation stands for him 518. Welcome. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 2 of your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now sing together the Gloria in Excelsis. <laughs>
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthy, unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be a prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 89 responsively by half verse. <laughs> I have found David my servant. Yes, my Lord. My hand will hold him fast. My arm will hold him no enemy shall deceive him. I will crush his foes before him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him. I shall make his dominion extend. He will say to me, You are my father. I will make him my firstborn. I will keep my love for him forever. I will establish his line forever. If his children forsake my law, if they break my statutes, I will punish their transgressions with a rod. And their iniquities with the lash. But I will not take my love from him. Nor let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant. Nor, nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness. I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever. And his throne is the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore like the moon. <laughs> the abiding witness in the sky. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. 
Remember that you were at, at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Jesus Christ, you, who were once far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with his commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are all you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now stand and sing together hymn 664.
Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And he went ashore. He saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Speak to the name of one God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In our gospel lesson this morning, St. Mark tells us that after meeting back up with the apostles and telling them that they should get away for some much-needed rest, that Jesus saw a great crowd of people. We are told by St. Mark that he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Christ is, of course, our great shepherd. As Christians, we know this. But this fact has perhaps been the clearest to myself and my wife, Olivia, throughout these last few months. Now, most of you know this by now, but for those that do not, Olivia and I will soon be moving out to Suwannee, Tennessee for the next three years in order for me to complete my seminary studies at the University of the South and, God willing, be ordained as a priest in the Episcopal Church. While Olivia and I are sad to leave Christ Church and the many friends that we have gained here, we are both excited to start this new chapter in our lives. And don't worry, we'll st- even though we'll be gone um, in person, we'll still be canonically resident here at Christ Church. So even if we can't be in person, we'll still be here in spirit and through prayer, of course. But all that said, it hasn't been easy for us. It hasn't been easy. There is a seemingly endless list of things that we have had to do and still have to do. And I'd be lying to you all if I said that it doesn't get overwhelming at times. In fact, there have been times where I've had to tell Olivia that I had no idea how we were going to be able to do this. It is in these moments that I do my best to remember that Christ is our great shepherd. I know that no matter how foggy things might look from my vastly limited perspective, that Christ is in control over over all and that he will not lead us astray. You see, no matter how hectic our lives get, no matter how crazy the world gets, there is someone who is over all things, and if we listen to his call, all will be fine. This, of course, does not mean that we will not face trials and tribulations. It does not mean that we will not at times feel overwhelmed or even powerless. But again, when these times come, we need to remember our great shepherd. He will not lead us astray. In following Christ, our shepherd, we gain what St. Paul talks about in our epistle lesson this morning, peace. Not peace in ourselves, mind you, but in Christ. And this peace, which, as our liturgy tells us, passes all understanding, is perhaps best articulated by David in the words of the 23rd Psalm. 
Now, there is no doubt that this psalm is one of the most well-known psalms, but pay attention to the words in light of God being our shepherd and how his peace envelops David. In the 23rd Psalm, David states, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <coughs> now, was David a perfect man? Of course not. He was a human being just like the rest of us. He made grave mistakes, and he suffered great hardship in his life. He was hunted by Saul, his king, lost his best friend, and even had to spend time on the run from his own son, who seeks to kill him and take the throne of Israel. Now, we don't know for sure, of course, but one can imagine that in these dark times, David would sit wherever he was, perhaps by a small fire to keep warm, but not too big to be noticed by the sentries of Absalom, the son who wanted to kill him, and recite the words of this psalm. Even though he was in the valley of the shadow of death, he would fear no evil and put his trust in his God, his shepherd. David's perseverance in this regard is truly an example to us all. But, my brothers and sisters, what about the countless amount of people who do not know Christ as their great shepherd? What about the countless amount of people who are just like that crowd that Jesus saw, that are like sheep without a shepherd? And are thus, as St. Paul tells us, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. It is up to us, the church, to reach them. Now, of course, it is not we ourselves that reaches them, it is God. But as St. Paul says in his epistle to the Romans, how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? We must proclaim Christ in this battered and broken world. There is a lot of hurt out in the world, hurt that seems to be increasing every day. And there, are many that do not do that. there are many that do not know the peace of God, that peace which truly passes all human and worldly understanding. My fellow Christians, this is a call to action. We need to reach out to them. We must remember that we are an, an, an evangelistic religion. We cannot just stay hold up in our holes. We must do what we can to speak to this thirsty world. This world is thirsty for that living water that only Christ can give and is attained by confessing that he is the son of God. And following him as a sheep follows a shepherd in all things, great and small. In closing, the British writer and Anglican lay theologian C.S. Lewis, who spent many years as a sheep without a shepherd himself, has a few great words on the subject of following Christ, our great shepherd. In his work titled The Weight of Glory, which is a collection of essays or sermons composed by Lewis during the Second World War, he says the following. A cleft has been opened in the pitiless walls of the world, and we are invited to follow our great captain inside. The following him is, of course, the essential point. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your peace and for leading us as our great shepherd. Help us to be ever mindful of your presence in the many valleys that confront us. And when we pass through the valleys and reach the green pastures, help us to remember who led us and put us there. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. to page 7 in your bulletin, let us now stand and profess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. Please kneel as you're able. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, our presiding bishop-elect, Rob, our diocesan bishop, Dan Daniel, Anne, and Jim, our clergy, Jeremiah, our seminarian, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for Joseph, our president, Roy, our governor, Kirk, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. And that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. And that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Grace, Bev, Jason, Tony, Jack, Cecilia, Horace, Anne, Sylvia, Wesley, Julia, Douglas, Clara, Kevin, and Elmer. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And that we also come to share in their heavenly let us pray for our own needs and those of others. This morning, we especially give thanks for the birth of Linwood Barry Herman, the son of Caitlin and Barry Herman. Hasten, O oh Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in our goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You may show another a sign of peace. You may be seated. Well, good morning and welcome to Christ Episcopal Church. We're glad y'all are here worshiping with us this morning. If you're visiting with us today, a special welcome to you. I encourage you to fill out uh, those little 
forms in the pews that if you open them up, they have a little information form. If you'd like to fill that out, we'll get more information about the church to you in, the, in this upcoming week. We encourage you to please do that. Um, coffee hour is not going to be on the sidewalk. There was a little bit of a threat of rain, so they moved it inside. Uh, so right after the service, we'll gather right inside the, uh, the parish hall building, right inside the door there uh, for our coffee hour time. Our Honduras mission team is meeting today immediately following the service. Uh, we'll meet up in the Robinson room at the end of the hallway uh, on the second story upstairs. So you can grab a little snack at coffee hour and then head on up, head on up to the upstairs uh, for our mission meeting. The blessing of the fleet is coming up on August the 10th. That'll be at 2 o'clock p.m. at Horsley's Point Sandbar. Uh, anyone with a vessel of any kind is welcome to come. And if you don't have a seafaring vessel, you can still come. We'll meet at, uh, hopefully I haven't talked to Maria, but I'm sure she's okay with us meeting at her dock again this year. Yes. Uh, we'll meet at Maria Farr's dock, and someone will come pick you up and take you out to the blessing of the fleet. Uh, and that's open to all our parishioners. An update on our archaeological site outside. The vestry met this past Tuesday and has decided that the work will continue. We have a, a group of our parish historians that will be working with um, the Museum of the Albemarle and some of our parishioners to continue excavating the site and seeing what sort of um, items can be brought out of there. Uh, we're also possibly going to be working with the Virginia Theological Seminary uh, to research the background of the family who owned the property um, underneath of the church. So we're excited about all the all that's going on. You can check our Facebook page, or Ian Lawry has some great posts on his page about the history of what's going on in the church as well. So please check that out. I want to thank all of our volunteers who came and helped with Vacation Bible School this week. It is a lot of work to put on Vacation Bible School. The whole church has to be decorated. We need volunteers in all of the classrooms and at all of the stations, uh, helping make food and do music and lead the kids and sports and all that kind of stuff. And then it all has to be taken down. Uh, so to those who volunteered this week, a special thank you uh, for all of your hard work. And uh, if you didn't volunteer, we would love you to volunteer next year because uh, we always need more folks to help with this ministry. We had over 66 kids participate in Bible school this year, which may be a record, so we're excited about that. And it's a wonderful way to share God's love with the people in our community. So next we'll have our commissioning of the mission team. So if you are on the Honduras mission team, they'll be leaving this Saturday. Did you have a, no, okay. My wife is waving from the back. She's just saying hello though. But <laughs> The, the mission team is leaving this Saturday morning and we'll be spending a week in Honduras doing medical mission, vacation, Bible school, and uh, construction. So if you're on the mission team, come forward and I'll invite our senior warden to present the mission team. Facing the congregation. There's a paper. Can't make. Becky? All right. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we are baptized by the one Spirit into one body and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. Our purpose is to commission these persons in the name of God and in the name of this parish to a special ministry to which they are called. I present to you these persons being baptized in Christ on behalf of Christ the Christian Church. They have been here today for the mission to have birth and friendship and to love and serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. The next question is for those on the team. You have been called on behalf of this congregation to go out as witnesses to the risen Christ, as his ambassadors, to uphold and seek to serve Christ in all persons and places. Through Christ and with him, you will share in a ministry of reconciliation and encouragement to build up the body of Christ and to care for all who come to him. Will you faithfully and reverently carry out this ministry to the honor of God and to the benefit of this community and all whom you serve? 
We will. The next question is for the congregation. These persons will be representing you as they seek to do the Lord's work in Honduras. Will you support, encourage, and uphold them in prayer as they serve God's people in his name? I'm sorry, God's people in the name of this congregation. And your response is, we will. We will. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your son, before he ascended to glory, declared that your people would receive power from the Holy Spirit to bear witness to him to the ends of the earth. Be present with all who go forth in his name. Protect them all the day long and bring them safely home. Let your love shine through their witness so that all who come to them, come to them may see your glory in all that is given. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, look with favor upon these persons who have now reaffirmed their commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name. Give them courage, patience, and vision and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now in the name of God and in the name of this congregation, I commission Roland Dale, Ann Dale, Rudge King, Cynthia Mastro, Edla Stevens, Peyton Paris, Haley Storm, Will Hennessy, Ethan Todd, Sophie Monclaw, Lauren Storm, Lindsay Stevenson, Jeremiah Magnuson, Maria Farr, Isaac McDowell, and Daniel Cincy as ambassadors and missionaries of this parish. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good work and give glory to God. I commend you to this work and pledge you our prayers, our encouragement, and our support. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep us. Amen. Thank you. Please continue to keep the team in your prayers as they go to Honduras this week. Y'all may be seated. Jeremiah, wherever you are, you stay up here. Is Olivia back in here? Come on down, Olivia. As Jeremiah said in his sermon, he's going off to seminary, and just once we get back from, really right after we get back from Honduras, he and Olivia will be heading off to the University of the South. So we wanted to present them with this gift. We took up a collection from the congregation and wanted to present this to Jeremiah and Olivia and also offer a commissioning prayer for the two of you. So here you are. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jeremiah and for Olivia. We thank you for all the different ways that they have blessed our congregation over the past several years. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the call that you have placed on Jeremiah's life to be an ordained pastor in this church. God, I pray that you would bless them both as they move to Swanee, watch over them, keep them safe, uh, help them to engage fully in the work of the church, and Lord, might the ministry that he and Olivia do together uh, be a ministry that brings you glory and honor. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Congratulations, and let's give them a hand. For Altar flowers today are given by Lisa Harmon Wakefield in loving memory of Richard Harmon II and Arwen Harmon Burns. Ascribe to the Lord the. I'm sorry? Oh, yes, a wedding ring was found in the parking lot. If it's your wedding ring, you can come and collect it from me after the service. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his court.
continues with the great, the great thanksgiving on page 10 of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. A 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
beginning on page 12 of your bulletin. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those beloved to you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 525.